Hey guys, what's up? I'm Slim and you're watching Slimothy TV. In this video, I have a pretty cool one for you guys. We're going to be doing a quick review of this Ambient Weather Wireless AQIN Indoor Air Quality Sensor. So, Ambient Weather was kind enough to send this out free for review. If you haven't watched our full weather station review of, you know, their whole setup, go check that out. It's an awesome video. We go over just about everything about the Ambient Weather weather station. But in this video, we are going to be adding on this awesome sensor here. So I just wanted to do a quick unboxing before I set it up. So let's go ahead and cut through here and see what we've got inside. So inside the box, looks like we've got a service card. We've got a little instruction manual. We have a power brick as well as a USB-A to a micro USB. I do wish that that was USB-C, but uh, it is what it is. And here is the sensor itself looking pretty nice. Let's take it out of its little baggie here. And here we go. So it's pretty simple, uh, not a whole lot to it here. Uh, this is not the solar model. Uh, the outdoor ones actually do have solar on top of them, but this one just takes in the air quality and spits out a few uh, metrics for you. So if we take a look at the box, we get the PM 2.5, PM10 and CO2 levels with this sensor. So this is gonna be very interesting to see. And since this is the indoor one, I'm gonna go set it up now. Uh, and then through the magic of editing, I will make this uh, one cohesive video. But for now, I just wanted to do the quick unboxing, show you guys what comes with it. Uh, you do get the uh, brick, like I said. So you just plug this straight in and then plug this into here. And I typically like to have mine on a battery backup. Um, like an APC type thing. So that's what I do. But you can see it also has uh, batteries down here. So you just stick them in this slot. That's also a backup. So I like to have multiple redundancies. Totally up to you. But here it is. This is what it looks like. Now, real quick, I also want to introduce you to the temperature sensor here. Uh, I did just unbox it, but I want to show you guys what it comes with here. Here is the box. It comes with a little zip tie here. Ambient was kind enough to send this out as well as their soil sensor. So we're going to be showing you that as well here, um, but it also comes with just a little booklet. And then here is the temperature sensor itself. And there's a the little probe right there, and this is 10 foot. So you can really put this wherever you need to put it. If I go ahead and take this off, you can see the little dip switches there as well as the battery compartment. So I'm of course going to set this up. I'll test it out for a bit. I'm not sure where I'm gonna put it just yet, possibly an aquarium, but we will see. But that is what it looks like. Just a nice little thing. It's got a little display here and it should also integrate perfectly with the app as well as the display. So we'll see about that. Here is the soil moisture sensor. This is perfect if you have a garden. Uh, I can't think of anything more perfect actually, especially for the summer months, which of course we have passed, but even into the winter, if you have uh, outdoor plants, you wanna know how much water they have and if they need to be watered. So here is a quick look at the box. If you want to pause it back there and take a look, but I'm very curious to see what this is like. Seems very cool uh, in theory, so to see where I'm going to put it. And it's got some instructions here. I'm not gonna read through all that, but of course we'll go through it. There are a lot of attentions here, so uh, <laughs> make sure they have your attention. Um, here is the cap that they're talking about, I think. Here, this is, it looks like a little gun. <laughs> that is pretty cool. I probably shouldn't open this right away, but eh, it is what it is. I will set this up probably within the next coming days. So there it is and nothing else in the box. We can set that off to the side. So really what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stick this in the ground, uh, possibly in my garden. I've got a couple different gardens that I can choose. So we will see which one uh, works the best here. Stick it in and see what the data looks like coming through in the application, as well as on the display that we have already reviewed. Again, if you missed that review, go watch it. It's a full review of the ambient weather station probably our favorite weather station that we have ever reviewed on the channel. There's so much stuff you can do in it. Uh, so go check that out. But anyways, with the magic of editing, I will be right back. I'm gonna show you what it looks like within the display. So be right back. All right, guys, so we are back. And those three new products, I've been testing them out pretty extensively here uh, to give you guys a great rundown on how they've been performing and how I like them. So we got three of them to talk about. First, of course, is the waterproof uh, temperature sensor probe. Next up is the soil moisture sensor. And lastly, we have the AQIN indoor air quality index unit. So let's go through each one of them and I'm gonna tell you how they've been performing. So first off, let's start with the soil moisture content meter. I've got that product outside. Uh, it's next to a very pretty big uh, pine tree. Here you can see it is connected. So WH31SM channel one, that is the device right there and it's reporting 89 percent soil moisture content which is great uh, it just rained today so that makes sense and as time goes on with no rain it will slowly drop it'll tell you when it's dry which is great so i could see that being incredibly valuable for gardeners people that have their own crops 
uh, getting a couple of those and throwing them outside in your different gardens where you need them uh, would be absolutely crucial. That was probably the sleeper unit. I did not think that that one would be uh, so useful, but it really is, and it's pretty accurate too. Uh, so I really like that one. I think the cost is somewhere between 25 and 35 bucks. It's super cheap. Uh, so you could get a couple of those and place them outside, place them in uh, different areas. Next up, let's talk about this one right here, the waterproof uh, temperature probe. So this is perfect for if you have a pool or an aquarium maybe, or you just wanna put it somewhere, you wanna get the temperature. So I've got mine set up in a secondary fridge uh, just to see kind of what it did. I don't have a pool and it's obviously December 31st here, so uh, no pools are gonna be open. So I figured fridge would be the best spot to put it. Uh, so I've got it in there and it has been awesome. It is so cool to be able to see what fridges actually do and how the temperatures fluctuate. And it can also give you an idea if the fridge is failing. So I might have to get a couple more of those and uh, put those in each fridge just to keep an eye on it. But that has been working flawlessly. It is very nice. You can see that the temperature there. I'm gonna dig more into the app here in a minute, so keep watching. But next, let's talk about the AQIN. So you can see that information down here, actually. So I've actually got the PM 2.5 indoor sensor as well as the PM 2.5 outdoor sensor. And now I've got the AQIN indoor sensor. So that can give me the PM 2.5 as well as the PM 10. And it can tell me the CO2. So you can see right here, the AQ10 is three. And once it switches, there it goes. The CO2 is at 690, which is pretty respectable. Uh, I think it'll switch one more time. There we go. One particulate matter for the PM 2.5. So that is awesome to see. It just cycles between the different uh, units right there, which is great. Makes it super easy to read. And I really like that, especially at a glance as I'm just walking by. Now, real quick, uh, a couple things about this head unit that I've noticed. This is kind of an updated review as well. Uh, you can see the data is laid out perfectly on here uh, and it's plugged in right now, but this does not have any battery backups, which uh, has not been, I don't know, it's not the best thing. So what I decided is I bought one of these APC units. Uh, it's a UPS. So if the power goes out, this keeps going because when the power goes out, uh, this screen will go blank. It resets all your data units here and that's annoying. I bought this, it's not super expensive. I'll link to it down below. I highly recommend you get a UPS backup. It'll protect from you know surges during bad weather or uh, it just keeps it running. So you don't have to worry about it cutting out and losing your data on the screen. Next up, if I had just a couple of um, notes about this unit. I do wish that it had the atomic clock capability. Uh, that would be pretty cool. However, I do believe that it is using the internet to kind of sync up the time and keep it going. So uh, I guess there's trade-offs there. Let's go ahead real quick and cycle through the data that this has collected from those different monitors. So if we press this button right here, uh, we can go to this graph right here. And this chart actually shows you the indoor temperature, outdoor temperature. These are for the maximum and minimums. So you can quickly go through those. Here we've got some more information. Every five minutes, you can see it's checking in and giving us this information here. And it's graphed a little bit differently here on this chart. Here we have the actual uh, chart of what it feels like outside versus the dew point, which I find very, very useful. And you can see where it really starts to deviate down here. And then this is good. This is kind of like your overall hub. So you can see what's going on. I'm trying to get this in the best lighting here for you guys. Um, there we go. So this lets me see all my sensors at once, all on one kind of a chart. So it's not like cycling through anything, but you guys can see kind of how that looks. I really like this layout as well because you can check to make sure everything's functioning properly. Uh, but yeah, so those are the quick graphs that I like to look through on about a weekly basis. Other than that, I am super, super happy with this unit. Uh, this is my go-to weather unit right now. Obviously we've reviewed other weather stations on this channel. Uh, so go check those out. But this so far is the uh, most expensive, but also the most worth it in my opinion, especially if you want to add on later and get different pieces. Like I've added on so many different pieces to this kit. Uh, Ambient has been kind enough to send these out free for review, of course, uh, but a couple of them I've actually bought with my own money for this unit. Uh, just because I was curious. So I highly recommend this unit. I'm in talks with a couple other companies right now uh, to review some other weather stations that are also uh, similarly priced to this one, pretty expensive actually. Um, so we'll see if any of those can dethrone them. But right now, this is the top dog for me. I really like this weather station. It's super reliable and, and the data is incredibly accurate. Now let's quickly talk about the app. I don't want to leave this video without showing you guys how that's doing. So I'm gonna cut off the top of the screen just so it doesn't show anything uh, that it shouldn't show. Uh, but let's scroll down here to indoor CO2, uh, which I really like to look at just to kind of keep an eye on what's going on with the CO2. As you can see, nothing to worry about there for me. Uh, PM 2.5 outdoor, indoor right there. You can see it kind of spikes up just a bit, but again, this is in the one to two range. So this is tiny, uh, almost nothing. And I like that it also gives you an average. So if you did have a huge spike, you can kind of check out the average there to kind of put it in perspective. There's the PM 1.0, there's the rain, relative pressure, which I also like to look at. And yeah, the UV index is always nice, especially in the summer. That's a very helpful one. Let's keep scrolling here. I'm just showing you guys kind of what you can see. You can also put this in a landscape mode to see more. So I really wanted to show you guys the fridge one. 
crisps. This is a very old fridge. This is just our backup third fridge. And you can see it very, it very much fluctuates between 27 and like 37 degrees, which I, I don't know if that's normal or not for a fridge, but uh, it's very old. And I guess that's just how they operated back then. Get rid of it. There we go. Um, but yeah, you can see like when I open the fridge and you know what it does. So it's very good to be able to set alarms on this too, to trigger if it goes above a certain temperature, which you can do. So that's very helpful for if your fridge were to break and you weren't checking it all the time, like if it's a backup fridge, you would get alerted uh, to know that, hey, something's wrong. And then here you can see when it started raining, the soil moisture sensor just went crazy. It went from 34% up to 94% saturated, which is very good for the plants uh, because it just rains. So yeah, you can see it's slowly going down because it stopped raining. Again, very nice app, very well laid out. So anyways, guys, that's all I got for this video. I highly recommend getting one of these APC UPSs here. Um, they are kind of heavy, but they're worth it. Probably got a total of five of these around the studio combined. So they're very useful. Get one of those, hook it up to this, uh, and you should be good to go. I'll have links to this weather station down below. Again, big thank you and shout out to Ambient Weather. Awesome company. It's been great to work with so far, and hopefully we will have some more pieces to show you guys in the future. If you like the video, hit it with a big thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.